everyone. This is Andy Schreier, or Patrick Kilborn, and Bryson Higgins from Stone Security. And we're uh, wanting to talk with you a little bit today about optimizing motion settings in Milestone, um, mostly just to optimize whether we're we're missing recordings or whether our recording is unnecessary and we're and we don't want to record quite as much uh, data. So with uh, with us today, Bryson from our engineering department is going to talk about uh, motion settings with Milestone. Yeah, thanks, Andy. So go ahead. So what you want to do is you want to log into the management client and uh, from there we'll go in and we'll want to go to our devices that we want to adjust motion on. So from here we'll go devices and cameras. And uh, the nice thing uh, with our device groups here, if you have your groups uh, separated out, if you have, say, for exterior, exterior cameras, you could have an exterior camera group here, or if you have interior cameras and you want to adjust those in bulk, you can click on a whole folder here, and we can come over here under the properties, and you can click motion. And then from here, this is where we can adjust. Now, this is going to adjust this for all the cameras in this group here. So you'll notice here I get a preview of the first camera in the group but I can, uh, I can adjust that for every camera here. So, but I'm gonna just do one camera for right now. So I'll show that. So we'll go ahead, we'll go to this admin office hallway right here. So on this camera, I can come in and I can adjust my threshold. So how it works inside of Milestone is your threshold is the line right here that motion needs to cross in order to begin recording. And our sensitivity right here, we have two options. You'll notice here that it's disabled under manual sensitivity and it's disabled because it, it um, if you see there, it says disable to let the system dynamically calculate the optimal sensitivity level. So Milestone will actually analyze this camera over time and it'll adjust the sensitivity up and down based on movement and activity. So if you have a camera that has a lot of noise or for at nighttime, um, cameras, their their noise increases, which is basically just the, the fuzziness of the view or whatever like that, you know, you get those. Um, pixelizations and stuff like that that can happen on a, on a dark image, the sensitivity will um, essentially decrease so that it, it's not picking up that noise and recording nothing. So if you do manual sensitivity, the system will not adjust. It'll just sit, sit at the sensitivity level continuously. And so we typically would leave this unchecked here to let the system dynamically calculate that sensitivity level. And then when we would adjust our threshold. So you see here, I'm going to move this over so we can see more of the, the view here, as we can see there. Um, uh, so if we come here on the threshold, so we can lower this down. So right here, this is 612. The default value is 2000. So you'll know if your system wasn't ever adjusted, if it's set at the 2000 level for threshold. And so typically we like to set this around um, five to 600, um, sometimes 400 for some of our exterior cameras. It really depends on how far away you are from the, the scene. So you'll notice here as movement happens further away from the image here, it's gonna, it's gonna affect less pixels than movement that is closer. And so we'll wanna make sure that you have your, the, that you adjust it based on everything in the image, not only stuff closer to the sensor, but stuff further away from the sensor as well. You saw that person that walked by just back there a second ago, enough to hit the thresholds, so we were able to record that. So, and we can move this um, down to increase our sensitivity. So it's kind of backwards in a sense, right? So you're lowering the number to get a higher sensitivity. And if you were to do manual sensitivity, if we were to adjust this, it's same thing here as well. So we would want to lower our number to give us a higher sensitivity. So, um, yeah, do you have any questions on that, Andy? I think that sums it up really well. Do we want to show a demonstration and have Pat walk by one more time with a, a high and a low threshold? Yeah, for sure. We can we can have him walk by there. And then uh, I also would like to show too uh, the ability to exclude regions too inside motion. So if you have an exterior camera, for example, um, and not save my changes there. So in here we're using excluded regions here to block out these bushes right here. So we've turned on the excluded regions right here and uh, we can uh, turn off the um, the grid so you can actually see it a little bit better there but we've used the the grid here to block out these areas here so that these bushes are not calculated into our motion we could probably do a little better of a job and get some more of these right here and we can just click with our mouse there to kind of select those areas right there and now that'll not calculate into our motion there 
So it's only detecting in the area that does not have the blue on it. Does that make sense, Andy? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's uh, let's have a uh, um, Patrick um, go back over there, and we'll demonstrate. I'll demonstrate the difference in manual sensitivity and our thresholds here. So I'll go ahead and I'll leave my threshold about default here. So you'll see here as he moves closer to the image, it, it increases the sensitivity here or the, the threshold here and it crosses that there. But as he moves further away, he's now, see now him all the way back at the back of the image there, it would not be enough. So if he were to just walk by right there, he would it would not ca catch that. So that's why we wanna really make sure that we have our sensitivity lower right there. So um, the other thing here too is on our manual sensitivity, you see here if I increase my sensitivity out as a higher number, it's gonna, it's gonna take, it's gonna calculate less and less. So you see here less that's picking up there. So even him right there, it's not picking that up there. So even if we have our sensitivity really low, the higher our sensitivity is, um, the less we pick up. So, but if we leave it on our dynamic, you're gonna see here it's gonna grab it at the right sensitivity. It should be all good right there. So we watch him walk back and forth. So, and it's only. I think we lost your audio, Bryson. Sorry, I apologize. Is that better? Yeah, got you now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so if uh, if we, I lost what I was saying. I apologize. <laughs> you started. You started by saying. If, oh yeah, if the. Only. Yeah, so this is detecting on keyframes right here is what I was trying to say. So if you if you watch here, that's why it looks a little bit glitchy back and forth is that it's uh, it's only detecting the keyframes on the motion here. And we can actually increase our detection intervals down here. We pretty much leave these default on each camera, um, which is 500 milliseconds and then only 12% of the image resolution. The more you increase this, the more load it puts on your system. So typically we would only do this um, if necessary on certain cameras. So we would adjust those. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. That's great, Bryson. Thank you. Andy, do you have any more yeah. questions? Nope. Awesome. Well, we look uh, forward to uh, seeing you guys at the next Stone webisode. If you have any requests, please shoot us an email, sales at stonesecurity.net. Thank you.